Good morning, Stitchers, and welcome to part two of my Stitch Mania vlog. If you haven't had a chance to catch part one yet, I will link that below because that includes uh, May 1st through the 15th. And also, if this is the first time you're watching, um, I'm doing Mill Hill Mania. So the first half of the month, I did all of the smaller ones, and I got quite a few of those done. My plan for the second half of the month is to work on these bigger kits. Now this video will probably be a little bit shorter because I'm not quite getting as much stitching in and also um, there's not going to be as many finishes. I'll be lucky if I have one. So the first one that I did is this Yellowstone Santa which is kind of falls in between the buttons and beads size which are the bigger ones and then the small ornaments. So um, it's kind of a yeah an in-between one. And I started working on it on the 15th. And I should say today is the uh, morning of May 22nd. So I pretty much didn't film anything from the 15th till now because I was just working on the actual cross stitches of this. And so I figured there was no need to show my progress on that until I had it done. So that's what I'm gonna show you first is that I have completed all of the cross stitching on this guy. And he looks really cute. This is the first time I've done any of the Mill Hill Santas. So you can see that I've done the back stitching and all the cross stitching, but I haven't done his beard. He's gonna have sort of a fringy beard there and I'll probably wait till the end to do that. So next up on that is just the beads. But I'm gonna put that off to the side just for a little bit. I really do wanna to try to get this done this month. But for now, um, I had a plan to start the monarch butterfly. This is the, uh, the the larger monarch butterfly, winged monarch it's called. And uh, I had a plan with Sarah, Stitch and Mommy, and we were gonna start this on the 21st. Well, that was yesterday and I was so busy all day, I didn't have a chance to put in any stitching. So I didn't actually get my start in on the 21st, but today's the 22nd and I have officially started this one. But as you can see, I have not gotten much done. Just a few stitches. So um, I'm gonna continue on with this. I uh, don't know how many days I'll work on that because for my plans going forward for the rest of the month are to be working on this buttons and beads, which is a work in progress already. So I would like to get a little bit done on this one. I won't get a finish on any of these though. The only one I'm, I'm hoping to get a finish on will be the beading on the, uh, the Santa because I mean once you get started on the beading it goes pretty quick I mean I can probably do that in a couple of days I'm guessing but I don't know my, my month my second half of the month has been a little bit busier and I've gotten less stitching in but my plan is to get this one done to work on this for a few days oh my needle, needle minder is just stuck together and so I'll work on this for a few days work on my ravens for a few days, make some progress on that. And then I'm going to squeeze in one more new start, which is the conch shell. So that's the plan going forward. I may not even check in again until the end of the month um, because I just think it'd be kind of pointless to jump in and, well, okay, maybe I'll jump in and show you a finish of the Mill Hill Santa the Yellowstone Santa and the uh, progress that I did on these other ones. So, okay, that's probably it for now, guys, with the check-in and see you in a bit. Good morning, guys. It's Wednesday, May 27th right now, and we are approaching the end of May, which means Stitch Mania is coming to an end. So I'm popping in here to show you my progress from what I got done on my Santa, and I finished him. So let's just zoom in there and give you a nice close look at how cute he turned out. I think he turned out so cute. I was a little nervous about doing his little fringe beard there, but it was easy if you just follow the steps. And the only mistake I made is right there was supposed to be three yellow buttons and I put a blue bead there instead. But 
I figured it didn't really matter. So, yes, he's got, uh, if we lift his little be beard up, you can see it's attached to just, yes, if you just follow the directions, it's really easy to do and just turned out to be so cute. So that makes now finish number seven for the month. And that will be the, the last one I get finished. There's just no way on these other ones that I could finish it. So what I did is, okay, I think on my last clip, I had showed you that I did start Monarch Butterfly. So that's what I did. I started the Monarch Butterfly on the 22nd and I only did just a little bit that day, and then on the 23rd I went back to Santa and I did the beading on the Santa, and then I came back to this and got this much progress on it. And I haven't really gotten much stitching time in, so this is it. I basically got all the black done and the uh, fuchsia pink, and then I'm starting in right there on the orange color. So, I'll probably finish the orange color today you can see it's just the dark orange. There's not as much. It's just one of the colors in there. Um, so I'm going to finish that today. Yes, I would have liked to have had more time um, to dedicate to these two, but it's going to look like I'm going to end up with uh, working two days on Ravens, which is already a work in progress. So I'll add uh, two days worth of work on that. Actually, let's open that up. Oh, and those of you who have a very keen eye may have spied in the last clip that I had my pajamas on, which wasn't supposed to be revealed, but since it was, I figured I would go ahead and just uh, stay with the theme. So today's pajamas are brought to you by these cute little frogs. Just a side note. Okay, so uh, let's see, what was I gonna show you? I was gonna show you, let's go ahead and open up the ravens. Let me pause you for a second. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like when it's done, and this is what I have done on it so far. Not very much. So I'm going to make two days worth of progress on that, get some more stitching done, and then I think I'll end the month with a new start on the conch shell. And that will wrap up the month, so I, you'll see me one more time. Well, actually, I'm going to add another clip onto here because I, when I was recording, I mean, when I was stitching the Santa, and I just decided to get some close-ups of me attaching the beads in this area here. There are two ways. Oh, you know what? I was also going to mention this, too, because I don't think I have mentioned it, that the Mill Hill kits require you, or they don't, I shouldn't say they require you, but in the instructions, it says to use three strands of floss. And in case I haven't mentioned that before, I only use two strands of floss, and I think the coverage is, yes, it's not as good as three, but because I like to do the loop start, I just um, go ahead and do two strands of floss instead, and it works for me. Um, as for the beading, they instruct you when you do the beadings to do these larger beads to attach them with a half cross stitch, and these petite beads to attach with a full cross stitch. And I have done it that way in the past. I do like to attach the, but you know, you could you could actually um, attach the larger beads with a full cross stitch too, and it just makes them lay sort of vertical as opposed to a slant. But I kind of like to get mine done quicker, so I like to use a half cross stitch. And then what I started to do is um, even the petite beads, I've been attaching those with a half cross stitch also, but I do the first leg of the cross stitch without the bead, and then I attach the bead on the second leg of the cross stitch. So um, I did insert a video, I did in, I did record a video of me doing the larger beads with a half cross stitch, but I didn't show how I do the small ones. So I may show that also, but that clip may not be in there. It just depends on if I have time to do that or not. But you'll see that next then, and then you'll see the final conclusion clip at the end. So, okay guys, we'll all see you at the end of the month, and uh, happy stitching! Okay, I'm going to attempt to try to show you some different ways to attach beads. Now, I am by no means an expert, but there's only so many ways.
that you can attach beads. So I thought I'd first start with probably the, the least recommended way would be to do a bead on top of a stitch that's already there. So I've already done the cross stitch. And then if you want to just grab a bead and then put it, now I'm doing this with the camera in front of my face. So this is, this isn't, this may not be pretty, but anyway, you can see that that is how a bead looks on top of a cross stitch and it doesn't really lay very well because it's got that stitch underneath it. And just, that was just kind of a demonstration to show you that that's not ideal. Now, I'm not saying it can't work. I mean, maybe for your particular project or what you're wanting to do, because, you know, maybe if you did another stitch with another bead next to it, it may help that one lay flatter. So it's just one option. Okay, so now the next option, I'm trying not to make this shaky, but just couldn't really put this in a hoop. Um, so the next option, when you get Mill Hill kits, well, let me see if I can show you. It comes with two sizes of beads, a petite and, let's see if you can see there. So the blue ones are the bigger beads, and then the, the white ones are like a petite, and they're smaller. And when you do the Mill Hill kits, they recommend that you attach the bigger beads with a half cross stitch. Now, this is where you don't put a cross stitch, so it's kind of like, you know, a blank spot. Like a blank, you, you would leave the beads, you know, the bead areas empty. And then you would attach the big ones with a half cross stitch. And then they recommend attaching the small ones with a full cross. Now, I'm going to show you when you attach one of the beads with a half cross stitch. Actually, I should probably come up first. So let's do one with a half cross stitch, which is pretty much like, like you would think. You just come up, grab a bead, and then go down either to the right or to the left, however you prefer to do your crosses. And then as you can see, it lays just like that. Okay, so let me go ahead and do a, just another stitch in between there just to kind of hold it in place like that. Okay, so you can see that's how you would attach um, the bigger ones. And then they recommend attaching the smaller ones, the petites, with a full cross. Now, it's going to be a little tedious for me to show you it with a tiny bead, so I'm just going to take a big bead again but show you that the technique is still the same. So, let me come up. So what you would do is, right before you get ready to take your stitch, you grab a bead, just like we just did with the half cross stitch, But instead of being done, you're going to then come up. Now for me, I always go from bottom left to upper right and then bottom right to upper left when I stitch. You can do it either way. It's the same. But what you do is when you come up, what you're going to do is you're going to go back in through that needle again like that. Now if you were on fabric, you can probably just go in through the needle and down through the hole. But since the paper is not flexible, I find it's best to go you know, through it and then down through the hole. Like such. Now you can see that it lays straight, like straight up and down as opposed to a diagonal. So now when you do that with the petites, it's it's definitely, I think one of the, I don't know one of the reasons they do it, maybe to get it to lay that way or also because the bead is smaller and if you did just a half stitch, you would see, see you know, some of the paper underneath. So I've kind of devised a method that I've been doing lately and for the petites, so I do my bigger beads with the half cross stitch like this one. And instead of doing the petites with the full one, what I've been doing is coming up and doing the first half cross stitch like so. Then grabbing the petite bead. In this case, once again, I'm not going to use, oops, I'm sorry. Come back up again. And then I finish the cross stitch, but this time I put the bead on the second leg. And so what that basically does is it kind of covers a bit of the paper with a, with a half stitch first. And then when you go back down, I'm about ready to lose my end there, you end up with a, the petite added with a, with a small cross, I mean with a half cross stitch, but it has one thread of, you know, one strand of thread, a leg, that's the word I'm looking for, a leg of thread under it first to kind of just cover up some of that paper. So I've been doing that with my petite beads lately because I'm more for wanting to get these done quicker. 
and it's really slow to do to attach them with a full cross stitch. So I'm going to bring you up here and show you that these first top two beads, because you're wondering, does it change the look much? These top two beads that I did right here, I attached the petites with a full cross stitch right there. And then all the rest of these little petite glass beads I attached in the method I just showed you where I do one leg of the cross stitch and then on the second leg I add the bead. And I think that for the extra work that's involved going back through the bead a second time when all is said and done I don't think it made that much of a difference and this way is so much quicker. So I just wanted to show that just in case you were wondering or you know kind of trying to decide how you like to attach the beads. So if you look at those again, you can kind of see the first one was a bead over the full cross stitch, the second one was a bead attached with a half cross stitch, the third was attached with a full cross stitch, and then that fourth one is the attached with a method that I have been using. Now it could be a method that's out there, I don't know. So it's the half cross stitch through the bead, but doing a half cross stitch first. So. Okay, I hope that explains, and you can go or clear some things up if you had any questions about that. And then I think that's all I had to say about that. that one fixed too that I noticed when I was editing. I left some stitches uncrossed. Hey guys welcome to the final clip of Stitch Mania 2020. It has wrapped up. It's actually June 2nd right now and I didn't have time to film yesterday but um, I'm here now to show you the progress that I made. So I was going to in the last clip say that I had about four days left of the month and I was going to spend two days working on ravens and two days working on the conch shell. So that's pretty much what I did. So the ravens, if you remember, was uh, I had just the just the ravens done. Uh, yes, that's the only thing I had stitched. So this is my progress on it and I made quite a bit of progress. So I did the fence, as you can see, and the pumpkins. Started to go up the side to the tree there, and then I went up and did the center of the moon. So, and I'm, I'm, yeah, let's see where we at. Yeah, I have a lot of whites and grays still left to do there. Dead tree on this side, but down at this bottom, pretty much all I have left to do from the fence and the pumpkins down there is the beading. So. Yeah, just got some background gray stitches to do 
And that's about it. So earlier in a clip when I was talking about how I always like to use two strands of thread just because then I can do the loop start, well, I've decided that I'm going to sort of alter that statement a little bit and say that the white really does look better if you use three strands, even though white stitches just l never look nice anyway, wouldn't you agree? I mean, we I kind of think as stitchers, we all know that stitching with white is kind of a pain because, you know, they just never look nice. So, and especially when you use three strands, they look kind of ratty, but you know, who's looking that close? It does give better coverage though. So I would say on these millhole kits, if you have to use white, it's best to use three strands. However, I still probably, depending on the design, might not always use three strands because I like to do the loop start. Uh, and if you don't know what the loop start is, just Google it. Loop start cross stitching. It's amazing. It will change your life if you don't know how to do it. Okay, that's it for that one. And um, once again, I didn't want to put it down because that's what always happens. What is this little white fleck I see on there? Um, just part of the paper. Uh, anyway, um, when I was working on the Monarch Butterfly, I didn't want to put it down. And then when I got onto this one, it's like, oh yeah, I just want to keep working on this. And I had a slight moment where I was thinking, maybe I won't start the conch shell and I'll just work four days on this because I wanted to make some good progress. But then I thought, well, there might be those of you out there that might be looking forward to seeing me start the conch shell. So I put this one aside and I brought out the conch shell to do a start on it with only two days left in the month. So I started stitching it and as you can see right there, this thing is full coverage. Um, some of the button, buttons and beads are full coverage and sometimes they're not. But they all, they do have a, quite a bit more stitching in them. But I thought, you know, I kind of really speed up my technique and I've been trying to do two-handed stitching for like years and I've never mastered it but this year I actually did get better at doing two-handed stitching so once you're doing two-handed stitching it's kind of hard to go back and do one-handed stitching because it just feels so slow so I was trying to think of a way that I could do two-handed stitching with the mill heels because they are on perforated paper so you can't put them in a hoop so I just decided to experiment a little bit and oh by the way I'm not wearing pajamas today today's video is brought to you by my jean shorts, ratty old jean shorts, or jorts, if you will. Yes, because it's hot here and it's actually later in the day, and I'm uh, I'm actually dressed today. So hey, there's that. I'm having a little bit of a issue over here, so you can just stare at my ratty old jorts for a minute. Okay, I decided to experiment by stitching some fabric onto the perforated paper to make an extension, a fabric extension that I could then put in a hoop. So it worked out well. I'm actually was, wasn't sure I was prepared to break a needle on my sewing machine if that were to happen because perforated paper kind of falls somewhere in between a paper and a plastic, like a coated paper and plastic. So I wasn't sure how my sewing machine would deal with it. And let me flip you over here just for a second so you can kind of see I just used, if you look right, I'll point with this, there, I used a very large basting stitch. And you know what, my sewing machine just stitched right over that paper without an issue at all. So yeah, I just used that real large basting stitch so that it would be really easy to take out when I'm done. And that allowed me then to put it into my Oh, this is a, just in case somebody asks, I'm sure they will, this is a Morgan hoop stand that comes in, so it's got the hoop, I think I have the, t the 7 inch and the 10 inch, so it has a hoop on the bottom that's 7 inches and a hoop on the top or, or vice versa, you know, depending on which one you use. If you're stitching with a small one, then the bigger one's on the bottom, but it comes with these legs that pop out. They just slide off like that. And you can use just the hoop by itself or you can put the legs in it and use it as a lap stand. And I always remove this, the third leg when I do that, just because I, my, it gets, I have more movement of my hand under there. So this is probably really hard to see so up close. But what that allows you to do then is have one hand underneath and one hand on top and you can do two handed stitching and therefore stitch quicker. And this is the progress that I got on that in two days.
So I think it's really, really turning out pretty. I love the colors. And just bonus that this fabric I chose really coordinates with it well, wouldn't you say? So that's where I ended with that. And then you might think that that's all I have for you. But there's more. Because I received another, I bought another Mill Hill kit, another small one. And it came in the mail. And I just had to start it. So actually, on the very last day of Stitch Mania, I squeezed in another start and finish. And let me get that for you. Hold one second. It's not out of the package. Okay, and the one that I bought is Firecracker uh, because I figured, well, most of the fireworks displays are going to be canceled this year and I to com commemorate the fact that we won't see any fireworks this year, I went ahead and got this one and stitched it. And it was so quick and easy, I got it done on, in one day. And that is how it turned out. So sparkly. You can even see right down there at the bottom. Got that nice little sparkly star treasure. Isn't that cute? So there, got another one in, another, another final finish in for Stitch Mania, or Mill Hill Mania. So, all right, that is uh, all I have to, do, to say about that. I'll quickly go over my stitching plans for the summer, um, and it will be quick because I'm not going to make any plans. I'm going to just sort of see where my stitching heart takes me and stitch on whatever I feel like stitching on and not commit to anything. And then when I do my next update, you'll see what I worked on. Now there is, okay, I shouldn't say I won't have any plans. I'm, I'm going to keep working on balloon glow. I've got that going in the background. I'm going to maybe continue on some of these Mill Hill kits, the buttons and beads. Now that I've got the two-handed stitching down, maybe I'll finish all three of them. But I'm going to do that, and then what I would like before my next update, floss tube update, is to have fully finished all of these little mill hills that I did, that I stitched this month. So basically just want to get them all trimmed and backed with felt and put their little loop on them. So hopefully by the next time I come in for an update, I'll have all of those FFOs to show you. And maybe I won't, but that's my plan. That really won't take long. It's just a matter of sitting down and doing it, and it's not that hard. So it's not like I have to do any framing or anything. So that's my plan going forward, and I don't, as I was putting my stuff away, I realized that I never came back in and showed you the rest of the stitching that I did on the Monarch Butterfly. I think in that the earlier clip I said I had started the orange and that I was going to finish doing some more orange that day, and I did. I got the orange done on that day. So I just thought I would show you that so you can see where I ended up with that. Probably you guys could probably care less, but for my own documenting purposes, I did want to include this in that clip. So, okay, that's it. Back to the other video. Thank you so much for following along, and I appreciate all your comments and your likes, and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. I love to respond to comments and I really enjoy reading them and follow me on Instagram if you want. You'll pretty much see a repeat of what I'm showing you here, but maybe you prefer to look at pictures instead of video. So, all right guys, have a great summer or winter depending on where you are in the world and I will see you very soon. Talk to you later, bye.